All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, this is a video I've been wanting to make for a while, and this is basically the top Synology features that I use to run my business. So for those of you who don't know, consulting is a major portion of my business, actually the primary portion of my business that actually allows Katie and I to do this full time, and the rest of it is the YouTube channel. And I use a Synology for a lot of really crucial stuff, and there's some standout features here that I use and really rely on heavily. I'm also gonna go over some of the very basic stuff that it uses. Just to remind you, it is still a very good file server and I still do use it for that. And so it's kind of across the gambit of the top packages and services that I use on Synology NAS. All right, and so first off, before we actually go over the features that I personally use and well, the ones that are top features that I'm gonna be including in this video, I do want to throw out there some honorable mentions that are very, very, very good, but I'm not currently using, but they're very useful for business. So. Active Backup for Google Workspace and MS365. I'm actually going over to using Active Backup for Google Workspace, but basically both these packages allow you to back up your Google Workspace or your MS365, emails, calendars, everything like that. Very, very, very powerful, really useful to have, and incredibly awesome that they're license-free. Literally, I've had clients who got a $10,000 a month quote to back up their Google Workspace. And so having this is very powerful. Then next down the line that I'm not gonna talk about here, I do use, but I'm not gonna talk about here, is CloudSync. CloudSync I deploy for a lot of clients who wanna be able to sync with Dropbox or Google Docs or anything like that. CloudSync is really solid for businesses. You can get it as a backup or a great way to start migrating from Dropbox to using Synology Drive. Then another one that often goes unnoticed but can be very powerful if needed is DNS Server. I deploy the DNS server package on Synology NAS often if I've got a client who has domain controller, but only one domain controller. We can set up a DNS server as a backup DNS server for your domain, which basically forwards all domain requests to the domain controller and then all internet requests to the internet. And so that way, if your domain controller goes down and you've only got one, your entire internet does not go down with it. A common issue if you just have a single domain controller is the domain controller also is your DNS server, which means if your DNS server goes down, effectively your entire office internet also goes down, even if the internet's valid. It's just because if you don't have DNS, you can't access the internet. And so setting up a Synology as a backup DNS server for a domain controller is a really nice thing to have. If people are interested, I will write an article about that. I don't think it's for a full video, but I will do an article for that if people are interested down in the comments below. Two other honorable mentions would be LDAP and Synology Directory Server, both of which can be used for user management, can be very nice, especially if you have multiple Synologies or want to integrate in a Windows environment. These are very powerful and can be great to start with, especially if you've got a large business. And finally, scrolling on down, we have Virtual Machine Manager. This is something that is very, very, very powerful and can be super useful for people who just need to spin up a simple VM, who maybe have a QuickBooks VM, who they need people to be able to remote in and edit QuickBooks documents every once in a while. That is great to have where you can just easily have one machine that has the QuickBooks license. It's a virtual machine. It's not necessarily gonna give you the best desktop experience, but who cares? You're using it once a week and you just have multiple people who need to access it. That is where Virtual Machine Manager can be very useful in a business sense. All right, so those were all the honorable mentions. Now I wanna go over packages that I personally use for my business and running it. And probably one of the best ones to start with is VPN Server. So VPN Server is awesome. It is a very easy way to set up a VPN so you can access the NAS and even the local network securely from anywhere in the world. And I personally use OpenVPN for this because it's so easy to set up and so stable. It's really great, you're able to connect on in. There's a solid client for Mac, Windows, Linux, iPhone, and also Android. But pretty much everybody has a very solid OpenVPN Connect client now, which has just made it so easy for me to set up. I use it all the time. Anytime I need to go back in and test anything at the house or wanna have access to all my services remotely, I'm able to just VPN on in and now I'm connected and now I can do pretty much anything under the sun that I want. And so that is huge, really important for my business. On the flip side, for businesses that I personally manage their NASs, I actually have a VPN server set up on a virtual machine that I actually use to have all my clients' NASs and even offices be able to connect on into. And that VPN certificate I use to basically bridge in all my clients' NASs into a specific portion of my local network. It doesn't have internet access. You can do a lot of really cool stuff with OpenVPN and firewall rules. 
But essentially now they're able to talk to my Zabbix server and so I can monitor them all remotely and also back them all up remotely. And so that is really powerful and really nice to have. So I really like using OpenVPN and you can even add multiple VPN clients to a single Synology NAS to get all these connections on in. All right, so next up is a feature that I'm constantly talking about on this channel and that is snapshots. So snapshots, I cannot understate how crucial they are to a business because they allow you to basically have an undo button for the entire business file server or anything like that. You can get ransomware. You can have an employee purposefully deleting files or even corrupting them. You can have so many situations where even somebody just accidentally deletes something or overwrite somebody's changes. It makes it so easy for you to go back to previous versions of files and have things like that not be a big deal. I cannot understate how important snapshots are and every business should be deploying them who has a Synology NAS. Even if you're just keeping them for seven days and if you need space back, you manually delete them. Snapshots can literally be the difference. An employee making a mistake and saying, oh, oops, it's gonna take me two seconds to fix that because I can easily see previous versions of files and just go back to the files how they were a few hours ago. And, oh, oops, you just made that mistake. Now we're gonna to have to go through and spend hours and hours of rework or even days because maybe our backups aren't current. Maybe not everything was sent up there, or maybe our backups got overwritten, anything like that. It is so nice having snapshots. If you get ransomware, say an employee's computer gets a virus on their computer and it starts encrypting all the different files on the NAS. It encrypts all the files it has access to. Even if you don't have backups, you absolutely should have backups. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Even if you don't have backups though, there is a one click undo because you can just say, all right, roll the file system back to how it was before the ransomware occurred. And ransomware cannot delete snapshots unless they actually infect the NAS, in which immutable snapshots can protect that. That's not for this video, but snapshots are a crucial feature to running my business. It is very nice having that protection and the ability to easily go back to previous versions of files. Another honorable mention within snapshots that I don't actually use on this server, but I do deploy for a lot of businesses is replication. So replication allows you to send those deltas to another file system or another Synology NAS. So this means you can actually replicate your snapshots from one place to another. So you can get really great setups where you've got two NASs and they sync every 15 minutes. If you need to fail over from NAS A to NAS B, it is a one click button to switch on over and update the DNS address. So it's really powerful great service would highly recommend checking that out snapshot replication is a great thing speaking of backups as earlier hyper backup hyper backup is absolutely phenomenal it allows you to back up your nas to a lot of different media you can back it up to usb drives to cloud services to other servers to other synologies to google drive to dropbox pretty much anything you have a cloud service for or a device for you can probably back up your NAS to it. The only thing that I would say is probably missing here is an easy way to back up your NAS to either a Mac or a PC, though you should be able to do that with WebDAV and RSync, but this allows you to back up your NAS in so many different ways, incredibly powerfully. As you can see, I personally use it for a lot of different stuff. Sometimes it's just for testing. I can delete this. This was a mail test backup to see how mail restore would work. And then C2 I personally pay for and back up all my SpaceRex documents and things like that. I also use a USB backup. So I will hook up a USB drive to the NAS and back up directly to that. It's a really cheap way of getting a on-site backup. And it's probably the first place I would start. It's very important to have a backup. And the best way to start, especially if you've got a business, is you should at least buy a USB drive that has enough storage in it to cover all of your critical files. Keep that plugged into NAS and back up to it every night. From there, you can talk about getting an offsite backup and things like that, but that's the first place everybody should start. Assuming all your office files fit within 20 terabytes, you don't necessarily have to back up everything, but you need to sit down and say, what files can I not live without? RAID is not a backup. Finally, the other backup I also use, I back up essentially the entire NAS to my true NAS scale build using rsync. And so I have a bunch of hard drives over there and I back up pretty much everything over there. The only thing I exclude is actually the backup 
of the true NAS system. So they kind of back up to each other. So either one can fail and I have everything still. All right, now for one of the, probably the most important packages for a business to use is active backup for business. I use it for primarily two things, but it can do so much more. Active backup for business can back up pretty much anything you think of. A Windows PC, Windows Server, Mac, I still use Time Machine for Mac, a Linux server, pretty much anything, virtual machines, file servers, other Synologies, Active Backup for Business can back up all of these things, license free, all to one place, with the majority of them also having what's called bare metal restore. This means if you're constantly backing up a user's PC and it all of a sudden goes on the fritz, you can restore it to exactly how it was before that update or before it went wrong, or if their hard drive fails, you can just throw out the old hard drive, put in the new hard drive, rebuild it, and boom, they're back up and running exactly how it was the last time the backup was occurred, whatever backup you restored. It is incredibly powerful and so easy to set up and use. I highly recommend Active Backup for Business. For me, I use Active Backup for Business in two different ways right now. First, and probably most important, is my file server backup. So I run another NAS called TrueNAS Scale that I custom built. It's got a ton of hard drive space, SSDs. It's a complete overkill system and I use it for video editing and things like that. My massive bulk storage as well as my really fast video editing storage and running virtual machines and some things like that. I use Active Backup for Business to back up those file servers. So my photography stuff as well as my video editing file server. So Active Backup for Business allows you a really easy file server backup. And so every night it goes through and pulls over everything that's changed into here. And so if that custom built NAS were to fail, or maybe I lost a volume or anything like that, I could always switch it over to running on my backup server right here. And that way I'm not out of work and I've got the most recent copy of all the files, which is especially crucial so I don't have to do rework. These are things that would not be cost effective for an offsite backup, just because it's not worth it to me to have an offsite backup of this data. But having an onsite backup, at least for my business, is essentially 80% the way there of an offsite backup. Because you know, if my house burns down or somebody breaks in and steals everything, losing a few videos that I haven't shot yet is not the end of the world. For things that would be the end of the world, they are backed up to the cloud. And so this is absolutely phenomenal, really useful. The other thing I actually use it for is my physical servers. And I actually use it to back up both my website and my forum site, both of them on AWS. So these are both Linux boxes that I set up on AWS and every night they get backed up to my house as well. So I can literally restore one of these sites. Actually, I could fail it over technically to this NAS right here. And so say I accidentally messed up and corrupted my website, I could actually use these backups to restore it from any given time. And so it's actually sending it from the cloud to my actual NAS. And so I'm actually backing up my AWS cloud instances to my NAS. And because these all have static IP addresses because they're web servers, in my firewall rules, I just allow traffic from only those two to come in and back up. So that way I don't have to worry about exposing active backup for business to the broad internet. And I can just limit it down to specifically these things. And that way everything just works great. It is very powerful and really useful to have. I'm even able to go in and browse files that are on the server to make sure they're backed up. So I try to every two or three months, sit down, download a few files and make sure they're the same as what's on the server. And so that way you kind of get a, a sniff check. In general, Active Back for Business does a very good job of telling you when things are working, when things are not, but it's always a good idea to verify any kind of backups that you're using. I believe the old saying is a backup that's not tested is wishful thinking. Finally, the last piece I wanted to touch on here was actually Synology Drive. So I use Synology Drive to actually send files to clients and be able to store files for clients and things like that, as well as backup basic computers and stuff like that. It also allows both Katie and I to have the SpaceRex file server pretty much on our devices at any given time, anywhere in the world, as long as we're hooked up to the VPN. And so it's really nice having that and we can use that to sync and everything like that. So I really like using Synology Drive and so Whenever I have a consulting session with a client, they always have the option for me to record it and for me to send it to them after. This allows me to easily share them out. I can also see which files are being downloaded and which links are being viewed. And 
I also automatically set expiration dates on them and archive them off just because I don't want too many of those out there in case anything did happen. It's always a good idea to limit the sensitive things that are on the NAS that you have, especially if you're able to. So I essentially go ahead and archive all that stuff to an encrypted share, and then I unmount that encrypted share. So that way, even in the case where I did get hacked, there would be much less exposure because without the encryption key that I have to manually type in every single time, the attacker would not have access to those archived versions of the recordings. And so I do try, if at all possible, to just limit exposure. And while it's easy to say you'll never get hacked, it's always really important to plan to get hacked. So that way, if it does ever happen, your exposure is limited. So Synology Drive is great for that. And the last thing I'm gonna to touch on here is SMB. SMB is a very simple way to access the NAS. It has been around since the 90s, but it is very effective and it really works. Most applications support it. And for the longest time, I actually was video editing directly off the NAS using SMB. I now am video editing off that TrueNAS build that I built just because it's got way more performance because it's all SSD, but SMB is a crucial part of how I access the files as well. All right, well, that's going to be it for this overview. I hope this was interesting for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down in the comments below. And if you want to hire for me a project, there's a link for that in the description below. All right, have a good one. Bye.